So now I want to test our timer using some randomness. This is also nice because if I was going to hard code all these times over and over again and come up with the various times, that's just going to be hideous. But I'm going to leave these in here because I think it gives us a nice visual idea of what we're trying to accomplish. But then I'm going to go down here and write some code that's actually going to randomly test our timer with various timings like this and make sure that we get the right results. Okay, uh, much more powerful. And I, wa I want to get a random number of times and then I want to get a random time each times. That's a lot of times and a lot of randomness and say that 20 times. No pun intended. Four. Int i get zero. Oh, should we be pure? I'm always feeling dirty when I do int i get zero because it's signed versus unsigned and I don't know. It doesn't really... Eh, ah, whatever. I, I get zero i less than uh, num tests. i plus plus. Well, we haven't established how many tests we're going to do, so let's do that. Const int num tests replace this right here gets rand mod 100 so we're going to test this anywhere from 0 to 100 times I actually don't like the 0 I'm going to do 10 plus rand mod 10 so anywhere between 10 at least 10 times up to 110 times why don't I just hard code 100 here or 1000 I don't know just keep it as random as possible I suppose uh, let's see how much, how long are we going to time our test? So, well, this particular time, let's do int uh, this milliseconds, this test milliseconds, how about that? Coming up with variable names here. Gets rand mod 10, 1, 2, 3. So, anywhere between 0 and 10 seconds, we're going to, we're going to test this timing. And, Really, this is probably a test I want to run offline if I'm going to let it go from 0 to 10 times up to 100 times. Or it could, at the max, it could go 10 seconds for, our, for 110 times 10 seconds, whatever that comes out to be. That's a lot of time. I don't. I mean, one nice thing about unit testing is as you get lots and lots and lots and lots of tests, they start to take some time to execute. And, and ideally, if you can tell it to build and go home, go to sleep, and come back, and you get a report in the next morning, then you knew. You know you've beat up your code pretty good, and you also have a report of what needs to be fixed. Anyway, this test a milliseconds, somewhere between 0 and 10 seconds. Let's do sleep this test mil... need two L's... milliseconds. Okay, but before we sleep, we need to tell our clock, hey clock, new frame, forget about how much time has elapsed between up here and down here. Let's start you out at zero right here. Let's go to sleep for roughly this many milliseconds. And then clock dot new frame. And remember the way we're going to design our clock is every time we call new frame it measures the delta between the last new frame and the current new frame and gives us the amount of time that passed between those two frames. So that's why I'm calling new frame up here and new frame down here. Okay. So expect, oh, first of all, we need some sort of threshold. Const float thresh, threshold, is that how you spell it? threshold? Uh, we're going to say it's 0 0.1 f. This might be much too generous. And when we get our tests working, we can play with this and figure out what a good threshold is. A tenth of a second, that's actually kind of eons of time. I don't think we're ever going to break out of this. But what I am kind of concerned with right now is if a second goes by, we should, it, our timer should not measure half of a second. I want to measure roughly a full second. So we'll come back, play with this, and see how good of a threshold, how tight of a threshold we can have before uh, we start breaking our tests. Let's go in here. Expect true. Actually, before expect true, float elapsed seconds. Notice I'm putting the units on my variable names. Clock, what did I say? Time elapsed last frame dot time elapsed last frame. I'm putting the units here on the variable names because we have milliseconds here. We have seconds here. We're going to have to do some conversions and just to help my mental thinking process out and some readability and maintainability, I'm going I'm to put the units on here. It's important. Okay, elapsed seconds. So float this test uh, seconds gets gets this test milliseconds. I'm actually, for readability, going to move this up here by this guy right here. So we know that we have the int version milliseconds for our sleep call, because sleep calls generally take milliseconds, but then when we do our actual testing, we're going to test some 
floats and that'll be in the unit of seconds so this test seconds is going to get this test in milliseconds divided by 1000 I'm going to put dot zero F here because I know this value is going to be less than a thousand and an int divided by an int will always return zero in that case I don't want zero I want the floating point value so if I put the floating point value out here on the right do the division the compiler will implicitly cast this to a float as well and give us the proper result so I got this test this test let's call it this test time in milliseconds this test time in seconds so we have them in both both forms of units I'm going to sleep this test time in milliseconds. Clock new frame, flap, float, elapsed seconds is clock time elapsed last frame. Okay, now here we go. We can do our threshold. Expect true that this test time in seconds minus the threshold is going to be less than elapsed seconds. And this test time, or actually elapsed, let's go on the new line here, elapsed seconds is less than this test time seconds minus the threshold. Okay, that, that might be a little bit confusing, but let me explain what's going on here. I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing that we did up here. I'm giving ourselves roughly 0.1 seconds leeway on both ends and then I've smushed test time in the middle here and that's what I'm doing here except now I can't hard code a value I have to say well whatever this times test time seconds back off whoops back off the threshold amount and then here we should increase we should go up the threshold amount okay does that make sense I hope I hope that makes sense so well one issue with what we've written here though is what if the elapsed second, oh, it might be better explained up here. What if the time, test, this timed time is less than 0.3? Well, this entire thing will fail, which is fine, but then I don't know if it failed because of this or if it failed because of this. We don't get that kind of report with our testing, so I should actually break these tests up. Instead of doing two tests in one expect true call, I should do one test and each expect true call. So I'm going to actually break these up like I should because then at least I'll know, hey, we were less than. No, we were actually greater than instead of, well, we were less than or greater than. I'm not quite sure. I can't tell you because we didn't write our tests appropriately. Let's do the same thing here. Ex come on, expect true and so on and so forth. Then down here, again, we're doing two tests in one. So let's break this up instead of doing the and I'll put the semicolon there and then oops expect true this equation so I still get the feel what's the problem here identifier elapsed seconds did I spell it wrong elapsed seconds and elapsed seconds okay I still get this feel that elapsed seconds is greater than something and elapsed seconds is less than something, but now I have two individual tests. Okay, so are my tests perfect? I don't know. Maybe you're watching this video and thinking, Jamie, you have, that's actually not going to work because of X, Y, and Z. Or maybe you're not thinking that. Who knows? It, I love programming in front of other people because it's kind of like pair programming on the extreme, especially when I'm doing it in front of a class because the students always catch the errors and I'm constantly making errors. And it's nice to have somebody doing that visual backup. But I also want to mention something, what we're doing here. I'm using, well, I, we haven't went and found a sleep API quite yet. I'll go grab one in the next video. But we're going to do sleep here and we're doing sleeping up here and basically the theory behind our test is we start the timer we sleep we wake up and then we test our time now we could have done other things like like uh, used our the same kind of idea with the high performance counter we'd query the high performance counter in our test and use the high performance counter to test our clock class which we haven't written yet but we will and we will use that with the high performance counter but if we test our high performance counter code with high performance counter code and we're using roughly the same logic in both cases okay well we've had to write the code twice and think through the logic twice that's good but what I think is better is if you can test logic w using other type of logic and and so over here 
We're going to sleep and we're going to test that against the high performance counter. So I think that's a much better checks and balances. Maybe my tests are perfect. Maybe they, are, they aren't. Maybe the code we're going to write in the future videos will be perfect. Maybe it won't be. But if I know that I got the two fighting against each other, I'm going to have errors or I'm not. And I'm going to be forced to figure out where the problem problems are. Anyway, so, and it'd also be good writing the test, not just fire them off and when we get green, feel good about it, but to actually trace through this with the debugger and that sort of thing. Uh, I also want to mention, again, we have threshold up here. It's 0.1. That's probably too much. As we get the test written and get the code written, we can reduce that value or maybe increase that value. Hopefully we don't have to increase it, but we can play with that value and figure out what's the reasonable threshold and still have our tests pass once we know that our code is good.